My message to mm. you today is fairly simple. Healthcare is too darn complex. Complexity is the bane of our existence in healthcare. I think participatory design thinking is the cure. So what I'm gonna to talk to you about is, look, our healthcare world is changing in front of our very eyes with activists galore across this ballroom <coughs> and on the live stream that's listening to us. So how do we truly come together as a community and make sure that we're changing healthcare with the level of urgency that we all feel right in our bones. So that's, that's what I'm here to talk to you about. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll give you a little perspective from where I work. So I work at a, an organization called UPMC, and I'll tell you a little bit about how we're looking at the world that's changing in front of us. I'm also the innovation guy. So I'll give you a little perspective into what the right frameworks are in terms of how we're thinking and how together we can really change healthcare. Our time definitely is now. So one of the things I'd love for you to think through is not just, you know, what will you learn at a conference like this? What will you learn when you come and engage with all of us around the ballroom? But what will you also unlearn? Because it's so important for us as we're reimagining the future of healthcare for us to leave behind these stoic concepts, these assumptions that we've made for not just years, decades at a time, centuries perhaps. What would we unlearn as we reimagine the future of healthcare? So I deal a lot with startups and technologies and innovations, and, and one of the things that you know, I realize every day is how disconnected we are, in the sense that startups are in such a tremendous hurry, right? Innovators, hashtag startup life, we're so much in a hurry to get stuff done. But at the same time, healthcare, we're in no hurry whatsoever to <laughs> Status quo is so comfortable for us. We're like, ah, you know. So how do we solve for that? I think that's really, really important. So where we are is in that red dot, we're in this strategic infliction point, right? We're in this infliction point because what we've done in the last 10, 20 years is we've embraced the digital form factor. We're more digital today than we've ever been. We've got patients and consumers, and we've got folks leaning in and engaged, and they want to be a part of the solution. With data everywhere, data needs to be part of the solution. Partnerships, meaningful partnerships, technologies and capabilities that we just didn't have access to five, ten years ago. Artificial intelligence, blockchain, you name it, Matt, you know, all of those buzzwords. Right? So the key here is how to make sure that we're able to capitalize on this inflection point, bring together the willing participants, the data, the technologies, those capabilities, and make sure that we're able to leap upwards towards this next exponential growth, which I hope will be the future of healthcare. So we gotta challenge the status quo because complacency truly is our worst enemy. And at a, at, at a health system like UPMC is where, um, you know, this Pittsburgh was the birthplace, I, I don't know if many of you know this, um, Jonas Salk, polio vaccine, yes. UPMC, right? University of Pittsburgh. Yes. Tom Starzl, the Starzl Institute. This is where Dr. Starzl pioneered solid organ liver transplantation and some of the most you know, fantastic uh, transplantations in terms of how adventurous, how innovative uh, these procedures are, came out of UPMC. But we weren't complacent, we're not complacent. What we're trying to do is to continue to challenge the status quo. Like conventional thinking will only get you to where we've been in the past. So quick video, hopefully the sound will play. Conventional thinking can't save healthcare. Welcome to change. Just because it's never been done, doesn't mean we can't do it. Just because it hasn't been seen, 
doesn't mean we can't envision it. We are uncommon to the core. We are UPMC. So one of the things that I uh, feel is common across all of us in this ballroom today is how uncommon to the core we all are. In the sense that we're all believers that there is a newer reality, that together we can actually get to that newer reality, that what we need to do is to counter this notion of complacency, right? The status quo that we're so used to in healthcare. And that's part of what we're trying to do as a health system. So we're, we're a large healthcare organization sort of in the steel and coal industries of uh, Lior in the Pittsburgh area, we've sort of emerged uh, as a city uh, where you know, the new export commodity is not uh, steel and coal, it's eds, meds, and tech, right? And, and that's where we are. And what's really interesting from my perspective about um, the organization that I work for is the fact that for a lot of these innovations that we're trying to push forward, these newer ways of thinking, the reimagining of healthcare, uh, we base these on strong academic and scientific rigor. Right, so it's not just on a hunch. It's not just because it's you know seemingly a cool buzzword that you need to do it because everyone else is doing it too. Right? How do we root this in academics, in evidence, in data, right, in scientific uh, research? So that's really important as well. Um, so the other thing that differentiates UPMC from some of the other approaches out there, and this is one of the things that I'm really trying to capitalize on is the fact that we're not just a provider organization, but also a care organization. And that's really important as we look at this changing landscape in healthcare because of the dynamics of incentives, so dollars, right? Um, so healthcare today, primarily is very volume-based, you've all, you've all heard this, and when we can reimagine the future and we can talk about value-based, it's easy to have that roll up your tongue, so, right? Oh, yeah, we need value-based care, we need to provide value, yes, absolutely focus on outcomes, but until those incentives are actually aligned between the payer and the provider, I'm not, I'm not advocating that you know, there they needs to be payer-provider organizations everywhere. What I am saying, however, is that there has to be tighter alignment in terms of how we have these incentives um, in, 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 uh, actually flow through so that we're not just focusing on curing illness, filling those hospital beds, right? getting the throughput throughout hospitals, but we're also now focusing on this broader concept of wellness, this broader concept of keeping you out of the hospitals. And that's something that we're really trying to push forward. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. But what I'll do this is, how I'll do this is frame this in, in these five building blocks. Five building blocks in terms of how I feel innovation can be made to stick how we can actually make it effective, where today innovation is a really cool word. Everybody loves to innovate, but nobody likes to change, right? So how do we make sure that we're able to really bring these components together? So first and foremost is people, and this is what we're talking about here, right? And it's really important for us to understand that it takes all kinds of people. So the teams that I have at UPMC that I work with, the teams, the broader teams across the region as we partner with Carnegie Mellon University and their data scientists and machine learning experts, the researchers and professors at the University of Pittsburgh, the patients and the advocates that we're working together with, and then across the country and internationally as well as we're trying to partner with startups and entrepreneurs, it really is about the people. And what's really interesting about diversity, and I love this quote, diversity is the art of thinking independently together. Right? And that is the essence of participatory care. Right? We need to make sure that we're able to move healthcare from where it's been, not just in the last 10, 20 years that we've been rolling out digital solutions, but really centuries at a time. It's been paternalistic care is what we've been practicing to participatory care. So how do we do this? How do we make sure that we're able to have all the clinical, the medical, the scientific stuff that we're all pushing forward with? And the technologies, these innovations, these zeros and ones, right? And we bring them together to really push forward in this human pursuit of getting to predictive, preventive, personalized, and participatory care. So number two, I think, is really important, and that's culture. 
So a lot of people look at me as the sort of the culture snob, but I think it's really important to get culture right. When you're innovating, when you're working together and, and um, building and co-creating stuff, it's really important for us to understand that there is this big culture clash in healthcare, a huge clash. So first and foremost, acknowledge the fact that there is a clash. And here's what I mean by the clash. So on one end, you've got researchers and professors and clinicians and scientists, and we're saying, hey, evidence-based guidelines, best practices, clinical protocols, if it's worked before, do more of it. And yes, they're right, we're right, I'm right, hopefully. <laughs> but the other end of the clash, we've got innovators and entrepreneurs, startup companies, activists, right? We're coming on and saying, hey, this is brand new way of doing things. Trust me, it'll work. Right? And well, you can't just leave it at trust me, it'll work. Right? You gotta make sure that we work together, we co-create the solutions. Because sometimes what happens is like it comes and hits us right where it hurts the most. Oftentimes health systems just jump at it and we're like, you know, everyone else is doing it, we should do it too. <laughs> yeah, this is the life of that solution. You know, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> not always the best way to go about doing it. So the way we do this is through what I mentioned earlier is participatory design thinking, right? And this is where we bring in these end users, the patients, the clinicians, the users of the very solutions that we're trying to create at the very at the beginning of the process, right? Not at the end, but at the very beginning of the process. And we start first with empathy. Lead first with empathy. Put yourself in their shoes and reimagine what a better tomorrow could actually look like. Like, don't jump straight to the solution. Right? Understand what their pain points truly are. Right? Empathy, and then defining the, 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 the specifics of the solution. Ideating, prototyping, testing, and then this iterative cycle that really is rooted in evidence-based guidelines and best practices. But then, with this newer approach of design thinking new because this is not something that we've done in healthcare. Right? In healthcare, you go live with a solution and you buy the clinician's pizza and give them uh, a cheat sheet in terms of their shortcuts, right? And you hope that it will be fine. That's not how we design for a better tomorrow. So I'm gonna jump straight ahead to data because data is really important. Data is everywhere. How do we use data, however, as a basis of reimagining a better tomorrow. Because I think that's really important. It's everywhere. Data is floating all around in this ballroom here. It's telling stories of you, of your loved ones, of your family. But how do we capitalize on data and make sure that we're able to curate data and use the data that we perhaps even don't have access to today? Because where we are as a health system is we're at that tip of the iceberg. You know, we're, we're proud that we've 40 plus petabytes worth of data at UPMC. It's doubling every 18 months. But it's clinical data, it's claims data, it's a lot of imaging data, genomic data. There's a lot of data that we have. But the data that we really need when we think about this newer reality of healthcare and this participatory uh, care that we're talking about is data that we don't have access to within the domains of the health systems by today's definition. Because what we need to go after are these data blind spots. The concept of the data blind spot is, so an example here is understanding why a patient didn't show up for their appointment is a data blind spot. We don't know that today, we don't measure that today because the patient never showed up. It's not an ICD-10 code if you don't show up. You can't bill for someone not showing up or for a clinician not ordering a scan because it was inappropriate for that patient. Understanding the specifics of what's needed for that person is really, really important. So the data blind spots are critical. But how do we connect all of these big data elements, big insights, is what I'm really pushing for. And one of the things that I talk about is how it's not really just about the data. What it is, is it's about <coughs> consolidated information. Marrying information with evidence-based guidelines, with clinical best practices, and protocols, and then going to knowledge and insight but really the goal is behavior change. And the way we get to behavior change is through nudges, right? So at the end of the day, when you think about 
changing and shifting the future of healthcare. It's through those nudges. It could be digital nudges. It could be humanistic nudges in terms of how we have a conversation and empathize and create those nudges. But really, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. So, get my next thing here. So, new care model. So, I'll be very quick on this. It's important for us to rethink healthcare, look at it upside down, you know, convert the current ways of thinking to newer ways of thinking, but then align it with the right business models, align it with the right technologies and capabilities. One quick example, we're discharging patients at UPMC, chronically ill patients that have come into UPMC with congestive heart failure, with all sorts of chronic illnesses. We're discharging these patients when they get better, not just with a bag of pills, discharge summary that they may or may not understand, but with technologies. We're risk stratifying these patients, and depending on what strata of the risk they fall under, we're discharging them with different types of technologies and capabilities, and with their permission, we're actually measuring specifics of what's going on, um, how are they feeling, what's most important to them, what are their priorities, right? And what's going on is all of that then goes into this centralized data hub. And before they fall off the guardrails, because they will, these are chronically ill patients, and you know, more than likely they might end up back in our EDs, we know that they're about to fall off the guardrails. And we're able to intervene, and through these digital nudges, and sometimes humanistic nudges, where we have nurse practitioners and care coordinators and others actually involved and go and meet them where they are, where they eat, work, live, and play, we change the paradigm. We prevent that patient from ever coming back into our hospital ever again. And we're hearing feedback. I did everything that I wanted to. I, the person, the human being, wanted to. So that's, that's the reality of where we are and what we could do. So healthcare shouldn't just be about curing disease. It shouldn't just be about survival. It should really be about thrival, right? It's not just about adding years to life. It's about adding life to years. And that's the newer paradigm that we're focusing in on. And as the innovation guy, I'm here to tell you, innovation done right makes technology invisible. It's not about technology. It really is not about technology. In fact, it should just disappear into the background. So very quickly, entrepreneurship is really, I think, the, uh, the way, the wedge that we push this forward. And I, I know I'm running out of time, but what I'll do is I'll quickly run through um, to the main slide that I want to get at here, which is really around how we come together with our patients and with, um, with the clinicians that we're actually working with. And, and we've got two areas of focus. Um, most of this is available on our website, so I won't actually go into this. But what we're really pushing forward with is creating a newer culture. Creating a culture where we're able to capitalize on the data, capitalize on the fact that we're able to uh, flatten the hierarchy, ask difficult questions, right? This is, these are views from um, UPMC Enterprises, which is our innovation center. And you can see, you know, they, it, it's very different from a traditional health system, okay? And, and there's a very startup-esque feel to um, how we actually run things, how we actually ask difficult questions. But that's, I think, what we need to really move healthcare to the next level. Thank you.